Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This is InfoSec Pat here. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is blue teaming and how to get into this beautiful field. So what is it? It's pretty much you are defending your organization from the adversary, from the attackers and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in learning more about blue teaming, stick to the end and I will try to give you as much detail as I have from my experience and what, I, what I've done as a you know, blue team or cybersecurity professional. I don't only do penetration testing, I do a lot of things. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe and share, and let's get started and have some fun. Alrighty then, so we have a few things here that I wanna discuss. First big question is what exactly is blue teaming or what is defending or what is that entail, right? So like red teaming, you think about the stealthiness, you think about, you know, C2 frameworks, you think about getting bypassing your EDR systems and acting as an APT, etc. right? But on the blue teaming, we're focusing on defending against those red teamers and those bad guys, right? So as a part of a blue team, you monitor systems, you detect threats, and you respond to incidents. So you will learn how to use SIM tools, EDR applications, you know, email gateways, meaning like you wanna stop threats from going through spam and, and, and all that good stuff. So you're pretty much protecting your organization. Think about this as a like digital detective and you protect your digital assets, your, your, all your computers and all that good stuff, right? So maybe one day you're building out a firewall. Maybe this is more network security, but maybe you're working with them. Maybe you have an IPS or an IDS system that you wanna put into place and then you can analyze those logs, right? Just in case like maybe there's a, you know, a C2 that's actually calling out to the internet and you're looking into logs and trying to parse through that data, right? So that's pretty much what a blue team, what a blue teamer does, right? And I do have some questions that I want to, that I put together because of the video ideas that people ask for. And what are some skills that are needed for a blue teamer? Yes, I've done blue teaming, I do blue teaming, I do purple teaming, I do red, you know, sort of pen testing. I don't really do red teaming specifically, but I know what red teamers do. But the skills that you need to become a red, uh, blue teamer, excuse me, obviously the main, the main thing you need to understand is technical skills and soft skills. Those things are super, super key for anything in IT, in my opinion, but let's speak on the technical side for a second. You'll need a solid understanding of networking, what is a router? What is a switch? What is TCP? What is an IP address? What is TAC, uh, TCP IP? What is DNS? What is a firewall? Learn the basics of Windows systems, Linux, um, some, like I said, firewalls, routers, etc. And then familiarize yourself with some tools. And there's free ones out there, like security tools, like a SIM platform. There's Waza. There's Splunk. There's other, uh, there's, uh, what is the AT&T? Oh, uh, uh, Alien Vault. There's intrusion de uh, detection systems and EDRs and AV solutions. Those are the technical side that you need to understand to be a blue teamer. And on the self skills, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll need to think analytically, out of the box, problem solving and communicate effectively, right? You wanna make sure you can convey whatever is going on to C-level or other teams that are associated with you and your, your team, your, maybe your SecOps team or your blue team, maybe your security engineers, whatever the case may be. Blue teamers are such a, you know, a, a, a word that people throw out there, but it entails of a lot of uh, defensive stuff that you're gonna be doing, all right? So to get your career kickstarted inside of the world of blue teaming or in the world of blue teaming, what certifications should you pursue, right? I, I'm big on certifications and I've taken them all throughout my career and I do it so I can validate whatever I'm learning, right? It's not to put out there on the wall and put out there for people to, to show off, but it's more for my self-satisfaction. So when I did VMware, when I did Cisco, when I did Microsoft, when I did uh, SonicWall, uh, Checkpoint, et cetera, all these things, I did the certification that was associated with those technologies just because I wanted to validate what I knew. So blue teaming, 
<laughs> Let me go. Security Plus is a definite. You could do CYSA Plus from CompTIA. Those are good ones. Hack the Box has their CDSA, uh, which is Certified Defender Security Analyst, I believe. There's Blue Team Level 1. That's another certification. And the only one I've taken out of the one I just said is the Security Plus, right? I've never taken the Hack the Box one that's on my radar or Blue Team Level 1 or anything like that. And just because, you know, I was I was focusing a lot more on the penetration testing certifications in 2024, but things may have changed this year. So those are the certifications that I would do, right? Let's keep let, let's keep this uh, ball rolling. So gaining hands-on experience is definitely, definitely key, right? You want to learn real world stuff and get your hands dirty on the keyboard so you can learn this stuff. So what you can do is you can do stuff on hack the box, try hack me. You can set up your own like Flare VM. You can look at malware. You can try to analyze malware. You can do so many different things. And you can practice log analytics. You can uh, you can respond to your incidents. So say for example, you're creating a little payload or you're using Kali Linux to use like MSF Venom or using different payloads to create and execute and see if it responds or see if it detects etc and then once you go in there and analyze the malware and you can like block it quarantine it analyze it etc and you can use a uh, range force that's another one and then splunk's free training will definitely be a good alternative to uh, build your skills and like i said I, I love doing my own stuff so you can build your own lab using virtual environments you can install elastic uh, you can wireshark cicada uh, or cicada however you say that word and you can analyze all the logs that were that were ingested right for those potential threats and the key here is just to get hands-on so when you get into that interview you can say yes i never maybe maybe you haven't done it in the real world but in my lab i've done it and i've coached or mentored or talked to folks that just set up little labs in their home with whatever they have and then they were able to convey this on a job interview. So that's most important. If you have a good person that you're interviewing with or you know that, that's interviewing you and they understand that you may be a new person on the block and they will understand as long as you're hungry, I guarantee you will get the chance, okay? And another little key here is networking. And I've said this many, many times and I think I wanna be doing a, speak on, a speech on this in uh, Romania uh, this year. Networking and community engagement, right? How do you connect with other professionals? How do you connect with like-minded people? You have Discord servers, you have LinkedIn, you have Twitter, you have all these other communities that you can utilize to your advantage to network. Always be nice because if you're a prick, they're probably going to tell you to go kick rocks. So be nice. So uh, let's see what else I have here. Oh, attend, you know, different conferences, DEF CON, Blue Team Village. If you want to, you know, this is about blue teaming, right? So Blue Team Village, uh, they have it in DEF CON. I was, a, I was a, uh, a volunteer last year. Hopefully I'm there this year again. I was part of Blue Team. I was part of the Red Team Village. And it's always good to just collaborate with folks and network. Local B-side conferences are definitely key as well. It's another great community. And B-sides are probably my favorite. Because, you know, it's more intimate. Yeah, you have Wild West Hacking Fest, which was really cool last year when I went. And there's so many cool conferences. The main thing is have that face-to-face -face -face interaction and get those connections. All right. And the next one here, I think this is, I'm not sure if this is my last thing, but build a resume and a portfolio, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe you're asking, okay, Pat, like I'm going to build a resume, I'm going to build a portfolio. What should I put on there or in there or whatever you want to, English is hard, right? So on your resume, you know, highlight your certifications, highlight your hands-on projects, tools that you've used, even volunteer experience like Red Team Village, Blue Team Village, B-Sides. Even if you, you know, just helped someone, you know, put, put things in boxes or take stuff out of boxes and create the goodie bags or whatever the case may be, hold the door open in the front just tell them yeah this is what i did i participated i you know took my own time you know time out of my own day to participate in it and just to get that exposure so definitely definitely do that and 
The last thing here I want to close this out with is a day in a life as a blue teamer. Or what does a blue teamer do or what does a day to day look in my world, right? As a as a defender. Obviously every day is different. But in usually starts by reviewing logs, monitoring dashboards like I'm not going to say the you know, I don't talk about where I work or what I do, or, you know, whatever. I'm not going to talk about what tools I use, but you know, whatever tools you're using, you're going to look at the tool, look at monitor the dashboard, and then you might analyze some suspicious activity, maybe a log that's like, Ooh, that looks a little, you know, a little interesting. Go ahead and respond to it, look into it. And then maybe something as silly as a phishing attempt, right? Maybe someone crafted up a Microsoft thing and sent it off to the whole list that they find on hunter.io because they know the domain. That's the reason why I don't put where I work out there. And then maybe there's malware in there and they reported it because they're really smart individuals, my users. And then I'll put it in whatever Joe Sandbox or whatever kind of analyzing tool that I want to go ahead and utilize. And that's that. But you'll, spo you'll, you'll mostly spend a lot of time improving defenses, policies, tuning your SIM rules, patching your systems, um, <clears throat> testing security controls. And normally it's a fast paced and it's, it's always changing. You're always learning something new. The red team, you know, you only have to be done once, right? You always have to be right once. Like, okay, I'm, I got into a system, but, but blue teaming, you're on your feet all the time, right? You're, you're responding, you're, you know, you're creating things, you're looking at logs. So it's a, it can be a hectic uh, day in a life, but um, all right. So the last thing, this is, this is the one thing I wanted to talk about is mistakes to avoid when getting into it's with anything I put getting into cybersecurity, but what mistake, what mistakes me myself, I would avoid if I was doing this again in 2025, right? One biz, one big mistake that a lot of people do is skip the basics. The basics is, like I said, networking, operating systems, understanding basic commands. Without the fundamentals, it's going to be hard to accelerate, especially in blue teaming, right? Because in red teaming, it's a little easier penetration testing, but blue teaming, you, you're analyzing a log. So say, for example, there's an SSH attempt for something, and then like you're really looking into it and like looking at TCP dumps or whatever. It's going to be a little more technical, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. And everyone has their own opinion. But I think it's super, super critical because there's so many avenues to look at in blue teaming versus red or offensive security, All right? Another mistake is over relying on certifications. What do I mean by this? Certifications are great. Like I said, I have a ton of them. I've taken a lot of certifications in my life, but they're not enough, right? I've talked to people that, you know, in my career, when I was a director, I was a manager, and especially in the system admin, they have their MCSEs, MCITPs, blah, blah, blah. And I just say, okay, you have one domain controller, or you have two domain controllers, patch trying to authenticate to DC1. He says, log on server unavailable. How can I get patch to authenticate to the RD, you know, the, the global catalog or the, to the DC, DC2 or AD, whatever. And <clears throat> I really need some tea and I don't have any tea here, so I'm dying. So I'm almost done. So yeah, so just make sure you get that hands-on experience. That's more critical than a certification. All right, lastly, don't neglect your personal brand. If you're InfoSec Pat, like myself, if you're Bill Jones or whatever, document your journey, whatever platform, on LinkedIn, on GitHub, uh, try hack me, hack the box. It shows employees that you're serious about learning cybersecurity. And this gives you uh, like, a, like a plant in like your seed that you're planting in the wild of cybersecurity. So you're going to blossom, right? And that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys today. And just stick to your plan. Become a blue teamer if that's what you want to become. And if you have any questions about what I've said in this video, please leave it in the comments below. And please join my Discord server and let's have some fun. And you, you're more than happy you're more than welcome to hit me up on there anytime. I try to be as responsive as responsive as I can, but sometimes, you know, things happen and I'm working or um, elsewhere and I'm not always on my computer. Just be patient. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day.